Ezekiel chapter 16, we left off last night with Harlot. Wherefore, O Harlot, hear the word of the Lord. The Bible is very plain. That's why people don't read it. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms, with thy lovers, and that was the Syrians, the Egyptians, the land of Cana, with thy lovers, with all the idols, so well, there's those idols again, of thy abominations, and by the blood of thy children, we read about that in verses 21 and 22, they're killing their own children, America, which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers, with whom thou hast taken pleasure, the Egyptians, the Syrians, and all them that thou hast loved, with all them that thou hast hated, I will even gather them round about against thee, and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. So, God's going to disperse, verses 35 to 52, his bride. That's turned to a whore, that's turned into adultery. Uh, man's first invention was to cover his nakedness with aprons, Genesis chapter 3. God is going to take his bride that he's clothed, that he's given jewels, that he's given bracelets, he's going to strip her. And, she's, and he's going to bear her all, before all, as Christ died for all, stripped, slain, beaten, bruised, spit upon, upon Calvary's cross for all the enemies to see. Written in three languages by Pilate, of the three languages of the world, the three people of the world. I will judge thee as a woman that break wedlock, and shed blood are judged, murderer. I will give thee blood in fury and jealousy. God is jealous for his adulterous bride. God is very jealous that this woman that he loves has turned to whoredoms, taken his prizes, his gifts, and given it to people that have nothing to do with God himself. And I will give I will also give thee into the hand, into their hand. They shall throw down thy imminent place, and shall break down thy high places. That's exactly what Babylon's going to do. They shall strip thee also of thy clothing. It's going to happen. And shall take thy fair jewels, and they do, and leave thee naked and bare. Leave them burnt up as far as the city. Destroyed. Gone. They shall also bring up a company against thee, and they shall stone thee with stones. That's the punishment of the law. And thrust thee through with their swords. War. They shall burn thy houses with fire, and they will be done. Lamentations. Execute judgment upon thee in the sight of many women. I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot, and thou also shalt give no hire any more. So, what if with religions in the name of God today, God is going to destroy them? God is going to destroy the Christian works that were once good turned to the worldliness means. Now if they're saved, they're not going to lose their souls, but it's going to burn up at the judgment seat of Christ, and there'll be no rewards. This woman wore a crown, the Bible said, wore a jewel on her forehead. It's gone. There have been men in churches who have worn crowns, will wear crowns, who have been given jewels as one of the crowns speaks of, and Change into modern Bibles, change into systems, change into programs, change into whatever you do that the world does. Those crowns are going to fall. They're going to drop the jewels. They're going to burn up. Not you are, 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 are judged by the fire of the judgment seat of Christ. Your works. What has been the work of Israel? She has done everything of God for God's.
so will I make my fury toward thee to rest. My jealousy shall depart from thee. I will be quiet and will be no more angry. You know, God speaks about the last church age and revelation and being angry, making him sick. You know how he's going to get pleased over the Christian that can't lose his soul? By taking away your crowns. You're not worthy to walk in heaven and throw your crowns at the Lord Jesus Christ as the 24 elders will, will do and are doing today according to Revelation 4. You're not worthy if you've turned from Jesus and slept with Satan. You're not worthy to wear the crowns for all eternity. You're not worthy if you turn back to Thessalonica. You're not worthy if you're not serving the Lord Jesus Christ who died and bled for you. And Paul mentions many times, turn from the faith. Turn from the Lord. You're going to be found wanting at the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to find your works destroyed. Because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. But has fretted me in all these things. Behold, therefore I will also will recompense thy way upon thy head, saith the Lord God. Thou shalt not commit this lewdness above all thy abomination. What's the lewdness? Idolatry, imagery, taking what is God's and giving it to others. Taking what God has given you and giving it to the world. There are places today that, you know, they'll feed the homeless, but they won't give them the gospel. Well, we have them, pre we, we preach a message. Yeah, but are they really listening? Are they really listening? Or are they just there for the meal? We got programs. Are they really getting saved? Is it scripture or is it performance? God has told us and set an example on how we're to do it. All through the book of Acts. And you don't see puppetry. You don't see magic. Matter of fact, the magician you see in the Bible, Peter stands up to him and rebukes him. And tells him he's not even saved. Paul stood on a hill and preached Jesus Christ to those who worship the unknown God. Behold, every one that uses Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. Well, look at, um, what was her name? Herod's wife. Look at the mother and daughter relationship that was there. The mother was wicked and so was the daughter. That they both conspired together to, to take a prophet and to kill him. Imagine what Jezebel's daughters would have been like. Thou art thy mother's daughter. Thou loveth her husband and her children. Thou art the sister of thy sisters, which loved, which loved their husbands and their children. Your mother was, in Hamana, was a Hittite, and your father an Amorite. Thy elder sister is Samaria. That's North Israel. That's the capital of North Israel. She and her daughters that dwell at thy left hand, and thy young sister that dwelleth at thy right hand is Sodom and her daughters. You're looking from the land looking east. These cities are all sisters. They're all kindred. They're all made by God. Yet hast thou not walked after their way, nor done after their abomination, but as if that were a very little thing, thou was corrupted more than they in all thy way. You were worse. And we're going to see a, an illustration now. We're going to see an illustration of America. And God says, that Jerusalem was worse. Now let me ask you a question before we go even further. Let's see how much Bible you know. What was the sin of Sodom? 
You say sodomy. You don't know your Bible. You do not know your Bible. You have not finished reading this chapter. Because what you see in the sin of Sodom is the sin of America. America has just begun sodomy. But let's watch and see and hear. As I live, saith the Lord God, Sodom, right? That's what comes from sodomy. Thy sister has not done, she nor her daughter, as thou hast done, thou and thy daughter. Now, if Sodom has not done its worse than what Jerusalem is, what did God do to Sodom? What did God do to Gomorrah? He destroyed them. What's he going to do to Jerusalem? He's going to destroy it. What will he do to America? God bless her. No. If God were to bless America, he would defy Ezekiel 16. Because look at the sin. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Sodomy. Gay marriages. Men working with men that was unseen. Women doing that with... Is that what it says? The iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Look at number one. Pride. Made in America. Isn't there a song out there, I, I want to be American or something like that? Does America lift herself up as a bald eagle? We're going to get everybody. We're going to attack everybody. We can launch nuclear missiles on the, on the little country called Japan, but no one else can have nuclear missiles but us. Look at our military. We shut down Russia. We brought down the wall. We've got all kinds of things. Look at look at what uh, uh, democracy has done. Look at what America. Yeah, rah 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 rah. That's the first sin that God mentions of Sodom. Pride that matches America. Fullness of bread. Only thing I I let's see as far as I know. America has not grown her own rice, but she can grow grapes. She can't grow bananas, but she has, has wheat and corn to her fullest. I know people who come from uh, uh, Iowa and those middle western countries, and it just mentions forever to see wheat fields and corn fields. You go down a road, and there's just a road on either side that's either wheat. Or there's corn. Or there's soybeans. We've got much, much food in America as blessing of God over the years. And we take his pumpkins and we, we carve them for Satan. We take his corn and we put it in gasoline tanks to go to anywhere but church. We waste our food in dumpsters behind restaurants. We, as a commercial industry of America, I know this right offhand. We have food that we throw out that we don't even give to our employees who would have it more. We've got to throw it out. We've got to get rid of it. Even food that has passed your expiration, we sell it to places that will give it to you knowing the expiration is dead. We don't finish the food on our plates. We don't sit down in a restaurant and bow our heads and give blessings to the God that has blessed us. We have turned to one day that George Washington in this country has given to the honor of the God of creation and the pilgrims that came over here with the Geneva Bible. We have turned it into passing a pigskin around back and forth and getting ready to camp out on Black Friday. An abundance of idleness. America is a land of entertainment, movies, MP3 players, electric gizmos, electric doodads. America has got things in its ears that they should not have in their ears. They got abundance of all kinds of recreation. And if they were to spend that time in a book, if they were to spend that time in study, if they were to spend that time in the Bible, oh, what this nation can do to get right. In the old America, a man would get up when the cock crew in the morning. He'd work all day. When the sun went down, it came dark. Him and his family blow out the candles and go to sleep. 
after reading the Bible, maybe from grandma or grandpa rocking in their chair. The only time they would have would be idleness between church services on Sunday. Other than that, it was work, 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 work. Was in her. And in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. We have strengthened our hands to America to a laziness. People who can go to work and will not go to work. We call it welfare. And yet I have worked with many people who are struggling. A mother whose husband has left her and her children just barely struggling. And we won't help her out. But we'll help out the lazy. We'll help out those of a race of people who don't need to be helped. Should not be helped. We have our veterans sleeping on benches and parks. I know this for a fact as a street preacher of many years. I've talked to these veterans. They don't get the health care. They don't get the welfare. They don't get the care for serving their country. Oh, but a woman has 14 children by 20 men in her lives. The more children get, the more of a payroll she gets from the government. She's not poor. She's lazy. She has occupied herself as a whore, as an adulteress, as we've already read. And America supports her. We haven't read anything about sodomy. We have read about pride, more food, abundance of idleness, and not helping those that are poor and needy. The people in America that are helping are poor, they are needy for an occupation. I've had them in my own family. Only occupation they have would be a taxi meter on the bedpost. I'm right! I know it! They are haughty. Their head is in the clouds. No one's going to touch us. No one's going to touch us. Listen, the enemy is already in this country. They're just waiting to attack. It's not their time for God's say attack. At least when Babylonia fell, the enemy was outside the gates. In America, the enemy's in the gates. And they are practicing their practices in your public school when you tell no Bible. But you can have a prayer map. They're writing essays about the enemy in good standings. And committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. God saw it was good to get rid of Sodom and Gomorrah. God will see one day for America if she don't get right. If she don't repent. If she's following the ways of Judah, she will not. God will see right one day America fall. Imagine a president who claims to be saved after 9-11 having two or three uh, meetings with a guy who calls himself Holy Father. Really? Neither has Samaria committed half of thy sins. That's northern Israel. And they've already been taken away by the Assyrians. And there was not, not one king in Israel that did right. Jezebel... Ahaz and Ahab were all in Samaria. Not one king. There had been kings in Judah who loved the Lord and did a revival and got right. And look where they are. But thou hast multiplied and uh, multiplied thy abominations more than they, and hast justified thy sisters in all thine abominations. Which thou has done. It's okay for them to do it. God doesn't really see it. It's shacking up. It's just Halloweeny. It's just a Valentine with a little guy with an arrow. Isn't it just so cute that those people over there are so hungry? Please call this 1 800 number to support these people who've got a bunch of meatballs and a bunch of hamburgers running around and they're starving because they can't eat them because their grandmas and grandpas are gods. Please call this number and donate money to these people who've got plenty of hamburger running around them. 
and you call the 1-800 number and you give it to them being a stupid idiot. They're not poor and needy. They've got the food. They just worship the wrong God. Don't send food. Don't send money. Send missionaries with the King James Bible. Thou also which has judged thy sister. Judge not thee she be judged. Bear thy own shame for thy sins. That thou hast committed more abominable than, than they. Those people that walk to you. Judge not thee she be judged. You know what? You're a sinner. And you're a worse sinner. You and I are sinners, but you're a worse sinner. I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ for my sins. What have you done? I'm a saved sinner. And I don't say that prideful. But what are you? These people have been judging everybody else. But God looks at them and says, you're just as worse. Who are you mocking? Never mind the, 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 the little sliver they got in their eye. you got a beam in both your eyeballs. Never mind one. America tells us what's wrong with Iran. Yeah, but how many people in America, of Americans, that have been citizens of this country and New Mexico has been radiated by the country? Huh? What about that? You've done more harm with radiation than Iran has ever done. You have done more for sins than any other nation has done. You've got a Bible. You've got a foundation in the Bible. You've got a foundation that the first public schools were to be in Massachusetts to teach the people how to read the Bible. That's the source of your public school system. In your courts, you would grab a Bible and put your hand on it and say, I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. That's not done today. Yea, but thou confounded also, and bear thy shame, in that thou hast justified thy sins. He told him it's okay. Uh, 53 to 63. Rest, restore. When I shall bring them again, their captivity, and the captivity of Solomon and her daughters, and the captivity of Samaria and her daughters, then will I bring again the captivity of thy captives in the midst of them. Solomon coming back. Samaria is coming back. Jerusalem's coming back. That thou mayest bear thy own shame. And may it be confounded in all that thou hast done, and that thou art comfortable, comfort unto them. You know, Sodom has never done curse against Abraham and his seed. Gomorrah has never cursed those Jews. America has. And I think our future, I think we're going to do it worse. That thou mayest bear thine own shame. And mayest be confounded in all that thou hast done, and that thou art a comfort unto them. You made them feel good in their sin. America is sending out missionaries from religions to make them feel good, make them believe in their works, and yet their lives. And you know those religions were founded in this country under the Constitution. You have the right to speech. You have the right to worship under the God that you want to worship. You know what God told them to do with, with their religions in the Old Testament? He told them to get rid of them, kill them, get rid of them all. Take their idols, take their images, bury them, burn them, destroy them. Don't even lavish the gold that's on them. When thy sister Solomon and her daughters shall return to their former estate, has that happened? No, it hasn't. Solomon and Doris are coming back. And Samaria and her daughters shall return to their former state. That hasn't happened yet. Then thou and thy daughters shall return to your former state. That hasn't happened yet. For thy sister Solomon was not mentioned by thy mouth in the day of thy pride. He 
before thy wickedness was discovered, as at the time of thy reproach of the doors of Syria, and all that are round about her, the doors of the Philistines, which despise thee round about. The Philistines have always been an enemy of Israel. Thou hast borne thy lewdness and thy abominations, saith the Lord. Listen, I've given you these nations as a thorn in your side because of your sins. And you've done worse than them. The Philistines serve a god, uh, uh, Dagon. Look at all the gods that Jerusalem has been serving. Thou hast borne thy lewdness, thy abomination, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, I will even deal with thee as thou hast done, which has despised the oath in breaking the covenant. Be not deceived, God's not mocked whatsoever a man soweth that ye shall receive. And he says, I forget if it's Leviticus or Deuteronomy, he says, I will punish you seven times more for your sins. He gives you a list. He says, I will punish you seven more times for your sins. I am giving you another list. I will punish you seven times more because you were a people that had the word. Ninevites did not have the word of God. The Philistines did not have the word of God. What do you think God's going to do with America that has printed the word of God? King James Bibles are printed in America. I don't know if I can mention the publishing company, but you know at least top three, four of them in America that has published the King James Bible. And what are they publishing today? Modern Bibles. I know of churches that had a King James Bible in the pulpit. And what do they have today? Modern Bibles. I know of churches that have preached the truth, the blood, the hell, the salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ alone and nothing else. And today they're preaching uh, patch pirates and little good little stories for the kiddies to get home and tootsie rolls and all other kinds of things. Nevertheless, Hosea chapter 2, I will remember my covenant. There are religions out there that says God is done with Israel. He is finished with it. He's had it. He's going to burn them. He's going to destroy them. And they're going to give that land to their church. God just said, I will remember my covenant. Remember the covenants he did with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? There's something of covenant about a piece of land. With thee in the days of thy youth, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. Does that sound like the covenant ends? When I told my wife I will speed her husband to death does me part, that is an everlasting covenant that ends by death. Explain to me when God's going to die, please. That everlasting covenant means when God dies, he's done with Israel. When is he going to die? Now, when I die, my covenant with my wife on the marriage vows will be over. She will be free to, if she chooses to marry somebody else or remain widowhood. But the covenant that I do to death do us part, that's an everlasting covenant as far as life. Then thou shalt remember thy ways. Now man may break that covenant, but God won't. And be ashamed when thou shalt receive thy sisters. Looks like Sodom's coming back. Looks like Gomorrah's coming back. Do you think America's going to come back? Remember, these cities did nothing to curse the Jew. You're not going to hear anything about Germany. You're not going to hear anything about England. They've cursed the Jew. They've gone back against the Jew. When thou shalt receive thy sisters, thy elder, thy younger, and I will give them unto thee for daughters, but not by thy covenant. So God has a special covenant to Israel. Judah, 
Jerusalem that he will not give to other cities. But he's, he's going to have a captivity of these cities. But not a covenant. He says before the millennium, before the second advent, when he sits on the throne, you treat my people well. Enter thou into the judgment. I mean, enter thou into the land. Well, Lord, when did we visit you? When did we take care of you? When you did it unto the least of these that are mine, the Jews. Then he's going to pull to the nation. You didn't take care of these people. You didn't love these people. You didn't help these people. Depart from me into the lake of fire which burneth forever. Well, Lord, when did we? When you did it to the least of these. A nation for salvation into the millennium is how you treated the Jew in the tribulation period. It looks like some of these cities are going to come back and respect the Jew. I don't know, but these cities are coming back. And it hasn't happened yet. That thou mayest remember and be confounded. And never open thy mouth anymore because of thy shame. Israel, Judah, Jerusalem, the Jews are going to be ashamed one day. And that is a sign of repentance. I am so sorry what I did, Lord. I don't even want to. I don't even want to. I don't want to even. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to dream about it. I don't even want to mention. Can you get rid of that part in the Bible? I'm not going to. Because heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words. And they're going to come and open up the Bible. Oh man, that's disgusting. Lord, hide that. No, I can't. Because my son died for that. My son shed his blood for all that. When I am pacified. You know what a pacifier is. Toward thee for all that thou hast done. Saith the Lord God. Judgment comes upon God's people. Destruction. Because of sin. Evil. The results of sin. God has to pass judgment upon people that sin. For, for the nation of Jews under the Old Testament. It is complete, utter destruction of their own city. And when God does that, and they're ashamed, and they get right, God says, well, now we got a relationship again. Let's put your underwear back on. Let's just heal those bruises on the rear end. And let's walk as father and son. Now, as a Christian, you have a Bible. You have the proper, you have the proper Bible. The Bible tells us what to do, not to do. He tells us to study, show thyself, approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. And you know what our behind gets when we get corrected? If we don't turn and repent and be ashamed for our sins, we eternally lose our rewards. We have more of a word than the Jews have. Matter of fact, we've got the salvation set by God. Now, if we, repent, if we repent and show shame and are sorry, we can have that father-son relationship and retain crowns or get back crowns that we may have lost. But if you don't repent, if you don't become shameful of your sin, your works will be tried by fire as Jerusalem was charged by fire. And you will be shown naked before the judgment seat of Christ of what you really were. How would you like to be in your church and think everybody, you're this holy roller and everything, man, you're just great. And, and when they, God strips you naked and shows you who you are before your church at the judgment seat of Christ, won't that be an embarrassment? Of all the things you said about the people, of all the things you've done in private time, you may fool the people, but you ain't fooling God. How would you like to have God break out of chorus at the judgment seat of Christ and say, what sins are you talking about? How would you like that chorus to be named? It says when Jesus headed off to the garden, they sang a hymn. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be interesting if we had a, a hymn just before the Lord sets the fire to our works and we'll tell you what's going to happen. What sins are you talking about? Most of those sins are gone. And gold and silver and precious stones, as he's given his bride, remain. Israel is being beaten during Jeremiah and Ezekiel because they have sinned. They have got the word. They are chosen of God. They are chosen by God. They are God's people. And so is the Christian. And we have relied on America being called the Christian nation. 
And we did have a Bible foundation. When, when the pilgrims came over America in the Geneva Bible, that was called the Blood Bible. That was called the Bible of the Moderate. That Bible came to America because in England, because in Europe, Christians were being burned. Christians were being beheaded. Christians were being imprisoned. Christians were, were just being killed. They had lost their possessions. They had lost everything for that word. That is the Geneva Bible. Yes, the King James Bible was printed in 1611. Nine years later, the pilgrims came over, having the 1611. But the Geneva Bible was the blood martyrs Bible that came to America. And how many years after that did those black hats started crucifying and killing and taking property of the Bible-believing Baptists? And yet, there's a place, a little state, a little tiny state called Rhode Island, where you can find the first Baptist church of the Bible, and right around the corner you can find the first Jewish synagogue to be set up free to worship their God in America. America's religious. I don't want to use that word religion. But America's foundation of the Bible is a Bible-believing church. Founded by God's people, the Jews, and their worship. And then from the Constitution, you got a whole yellow pages of all religions that can do whatever they want. We just saw the sins of Sodom. They match America. We see that God is angry with his people because of sins. The church has now taken Sodom. The church is pride. King James onlyism. Look at us. Look at our, look at our foundation. Guns, guts, and glory. Fullness of bread. That's exactly what it says in, in Revelation. About the lad to see in church. We have no need of nothing. We got everything. Abundance of idleness. Oh, we got movie night. We've got uh, uh, performance night. We've got this night. We've got fellowship night. we got any night but night for God. Abundance of idleness. Neither does she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. There, I know of a church right now in my hometown, man, there's doctor's cars parked there. Lawyer's cars parked there. I wonder who they've held. Haughty. You can't speak against the path. Because I'm the man of God. Unless you come before my altar. Unless you come to our church. It's full of baloney. And commit abomination before me. It's no more a nation. It's the church. Look at where we are in the church today. Look at where people are believing through the church. People are being healed in church services, but they're not being healed at the hospital. Something wrong. The pastor's parking spot has a brand new spanking new car, and yet the, what other people are driving? And the sheep are starving to death. You can count the bones in the ribcage. And the sheep are disappearing because there are wolves in the church, devouring. And then when a Christian falls off to somebody like the Mormons or the Jehovah Witnesses, what is done to bring them back? Shepherd said, I left the 99 to go get that one. That woman that lost the uh, gold or whatever, the coin. She went and searched for that coin. The church is crumbling. We are in the state of Jerusalem. We are coming upon Christmas. I wonder what will be set up between now and December 25th in some churches. A little bale bush with lights. Secret Santa. 
shoe boxes for children with no Bible, no gospel. But we gotta give them shoes, we gotta give them pencils. Oh, we don't have anything to do with missionaries. We got too much of getting the building thermometer up high. So we can have an addition, we can have a coliseum, we can have an amphitheater. Sometime read Revelation chapter 4. Read Revelation chapter 3. Just before the doors open up in heaven.